Hello and welcome to Alchemy 101, the show that explores all avenues of transformation and aims to offer some useful nuggets that can support us in living in line with nature in a way that's true to our nature. No matter how contrary that might seem, just like this nightingale, the bird that sings out in the dark. I'm JJ, the Practical Alchemist, and I'm very happy you could join me today for a truly inspiring chat with a woman who's been through and overcome more in her life than anyone really deserves. Sarah Pittendrig is a mum, a multi-award winning entrepreneur and franchiser, ambassador for the Prince's Trust Women Supporting Women campaign and ambassador for every woman. She hosts a podcast called Formidable Over 40 and is a life and business coach whose life lessons have come together in the I Can method. There's so much in Sarah's story that you might relate to. I certainly did. I was curious about her I Can method, though. It sounds so simple, but knowing what she's been through, I started our conversation by asking her how that came about. Yeah, I'm I'm a um, a huge advocate of keeping business and life as simple as possible. Love I don't it. like to see anything <laughs> that is overcomplicated. I don't see any pleasure or um, relevance in being a smart horse and trying to 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 overcomplicate things. So the I can methodology came around when I was 49, and I found myself at a real crossroads in midlife. Um, my husband and I had just finished developing his family farm. He'd lost both of his parents to cancer within short succession of each other. He farmed in partnership with his family and um, someone had been looking after the farm for him. It hadn't gone well. And um, to be honest, he just felt it was the right time to come out of farming. Um, he wasn't in a good place himself. So um, we developed the farm. We we'd built eight houses. It had been a mammoth four year uh, project you can imagine we saw 10 houses all together luckily the last house just before the pandemic kicked off before that going right back which I'm sure we'll touch on later to mm. 2008 I'd been a um oh a, 2008 Do 2008 <laughs> exactly 2008 who wants to talk about 2008 oh, but God, anyway dear. My co-directors and I lost a business in 2008. And um, the long and short of it was that I ended up bankrupt. We lost the business. I had a personal guarantee. Well, that we all had for funding where we you know, raised uh, funding to grow our business. We never for, saw the 2008 pandemic coming, uh, pandemic, recession, well, just like yeah. we didn't <laughs> see the bloody pandemic coming. Yeah. And uh, so anyway, um, I'd gone through massive turbulence. My house was repossessed. Um, I, you know, ended up bankrupt, single mum on income support. Um, I'm going to whiz through this so that you get to where I am. I'm sure we'll talk yeah, about yeah. it. But I ended up building um, a multi award winning uh, business that I franchised from income support. Ended up saving my house from from repossession. Rec- reclaimed it back. Um, my husband at the time was my ex husband. It's a hell of a journey. Um, we developed these houses. I'd had cancer twice in the middle of it all. Came to 49, the pandemic hit. I'm sat at my dining room table and I'm thinking, hell's bells, what have I been through? Um, I'm 50 next year. When did I last feel happy? What does happy even feel like? What do I want? Who am I? I felt like I'd just been on this hamster wheel of recovery, you know, trying to yeah. recover from yeah. bankruptcy, trying to help my husband recover from losing his parents, trying to recover from cancer. It was just like this recovery, and I just felt it was life had been a complete battle. Yeah. I was at a total crossroads, and I thought, how the hell do I get out of this? I had no idea how to work on myself. And to be honest, I was very frightened, thinking, you know, I just don't know what to do. Pandemic, stuck at home with my whirring, worrying thoughts. Mm. All I knew how to do was to build and scale businesses. So I thought, right, okay, Sarah, put your business hat on. If you were building a business that was bankrupt, it was on the bottom, how would you rebuild it? I got my notepad and I just started drawing out all of the spider charts, asking myself the questions of myself as I would if I was building a business. And um, But obviously reframe the questions to be relevant 
to myself. Yeah. So I did the spider charts. Then I did some SWOT analysis. Then I started looking at goals and breaking them down into small pieces, working out that I had to really look after myself and my health and my mental well-being. I understood that I had deep roots of anxiety and um, things that I'd been burying rather than getting out. And I just needed a complete MOT and overhaul. Mm. And that that methodology, if you like, that 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 strategy that I, and I I didn't even think of it as a strategy. It was drawings and exercises and doodles and note, notebook um, really helped me to unravel. And I started to really understand where I was and what it had all been about. Yeah. And then when the pandemic was there and I was on LinkedIn and I was on social media and I could see people in desperate situations you know, I could feel what they were putting out, how they were feeling. They were trying to pivot. They were trying to juggle. They were burning out. And I thought, hey, do you know what? I get this. I can help these people. You know, I, 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 I've been there. I've been through this. And maybe my purpose really is to use my hindsight for their foresight to help them. So I turned it into a coaching program. And I used to sit I can remember when I was bankrupt and I used to sit with my head in my hands and I would be saying to myself over and over again, I can't do this anymore. Yeah, I can't do this anymore. I just can't do this. Yeah. And I thought, right, hang on a minute. We're going to reframe this and we're going to call it, I can do this. I can. So that acronym became Ignite, Clarify, Action and Nurture. And the methodology became the I can method. I love it. And I like that at the end of that, is the word nurture, because that's so important as well, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. I mean, honestly, to listen to your life and what you went through to get to this point, it's quite extraordinary. I mean, you know, so many people would have just given up and just just been crushed by it. Mm. I mean, yeah. is, there, is there anything particular do you see in your own makeup or, or what helped you to get through it, you know, beyond yeah. all the normal stuff, because so many people listening to this will say, "I wouldn't have been able to do that. I wouldn't have been. I wouldn't have been able to come uh, come through that. I would have been crushed." Yeah, yeah. There was one thing, my son. Ah, my son. He was nine. My nine year old little boy, and at the time, and it was like, you know, hey, you're a mum first and foremost, above everything and anything, you're a mum, and you've got to sort this out. You've got to reframe this. You've got to lead by example. You've got to, you know, um, make your son proud. You can't quit. You cannot quit. That is not the example you're going to demonstrate to your son. You're going to make him proud. And that is what has taken me through everything. It took me through the bankruptcy. He was my um, whole purpose through the cancer. Everything has been, you know, first and foremost, I'm a responsible mum. That is my job. That is my most important job in the world. Fantastic. And you're now in remission. Uh, in terms I of had cancer. malignant melanoma twice. Mm-hmm. And on both occasions, I had uh, two, oper- two operations on both occasions. Mm-hmm. And um, I got the all clear on, on both after the second operation. And now I go into hospital every six months just to have all, all of my moles and my skin checked I've right. had 14 moles off altogether. Oh, wow. uh, you know, anything that they think they're not sure of now, they take yeah. them off. So anybody listening, I'm a, I'm a huge, huge advocate of if you're never sure about anything, there's no silly question. There's mm. no silly question. Get it checked out. Well, I think that's a good rule for everything in life, Absolutely. really. There's no silly yeah. question. If you don't know something, just ask instead of muddling yeah. along. I've probably done that myself far too often in life. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Think I can't ask. I can't ask about that. No, 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 no. That wouldn't, you know, that would seem a bit silly. But no, yeah. you're right. No silly questions. And so now, then, um, you have. Well, I guess you could say you've pivoted and you've mm-hmm. um, now started working with people and helping people develop themselves and their lives and their businesses. Would that be yes. true? Absolutely true. Um, I am a huge believer that 
if you're a female founder or you're a female entrepreneur or you're anyone, anyone in business, not necessarily female, mm. but I tend to work with females because of my own personal experiences, especially yeah. with menopause and all of those sort of things in midlife. But I think it's a holistic approach because your business impacts your personal life, your personal life impacts your business. And when you're a founder, it runs through your through your veins like like your lifeblood. Mm -hmm. And um, but at times you can get burnt out. And it do, and I'm, I'm very passionate to help founders understand what their motivation is and why they've become burnt out, because sometimes enough's never enough. And the problem is they're on this on this road to prove something. So they get to six figures and then that was a massive milestone. They don't recognize it straight away. Right. I've got six figures now. I've got to go on to seven figures and yeah. they don't recognize these milestones and enough's never enough. And then they get to seven figures or wherever they get to whatever that milestone and they burn out because it, it's, it's sort of, it's this feeling of there's no real satisfaction and it's why. So what is that root cause that is creating them to feel that they have to prove something. Now, I'm not saying every founder has to do that. Not every founder is doing that. But a lot of them do burn out. And it's about finding out why. So some people, it might be because they've got the self-limiting route that's driving them where enough's never enough so that they're on a loser to start with they become hugely successful on because of that yeah. but unfortunately at the cost of their health and not their mental health then we have other founders who are who are doing fantastic but they can't get to realize their purpose you know their full potential because they're not getting the support at home yes so they're trying to juggle everything at home taking on the lion's share there trying to run the business and they're worn out and they've got nobody to talk to and they can't share vulnerability because over the years, it's taken decades to build up the authority. You can't tell the people at work how you feel, the, your employees who are relying on you, because that straight away puts in the seed of doubt. If our leader's questioning their ability, that's a, that's a wobbly ship. Yes. And at home, well, they're not listening anyway. They're just leaving it to you. You're the decision maker. Nobody wants to make decisions. You're caring for your parents. You're caring for your kids. You're caring for your husband, who's sometimes your third or fourth child. And it becomes exhausting. And you, it often does. friends aren't even in the profession. You know, many friends, when you get to midlife, aren't running businesses. And they don't understand and you don't want to burden them. So what I've done is I've created a safe space because I do understand where female founders, female entrepreneurs, women in business can come to me, share their vulnerability, let me hold their hand, let them rely on me to help them, you know, lean on me, my experience, uh, my lessons from life and business and help them to break through whatever the challenge is and get back onto that purposeful path. That's what I do. Well, I, I think that's brilliant and uh, I can relate to so much of it, although I'm not running a business with employees. Yes. Um, you know, I, I, I work, I do stuff, yes. I do these shows, I, you know, mm -hmm. I do a lot. I do it all on my own and uh, even, and you'll laugh at this maybe, some of the listeners might laugh at this, but even the fact that I have to break off because I will not, because of my health, buy ready meals and stick mm -hmm. them in a microwave. I don't have yeah. a microwave. Yeah. So I cook from scratch. Yeah. And so I, and I make sure that I break off for lunch and I break off for, you know, I have computer breaks and I do all of that sort of thing. And I swim most days and, you know, everybody knows that who listens regularly to this show. Yeah. And it's, it takes its toll because you feel that you can never get everything done. Yeah, I know. I know. And that's another thing. I work with a lot of female founders like yourself who are solo entrepreneurs. And yeah. the other side of it for them is that they often don't have anyone to brainstorm with. Yes. So yeah. just to have somebody else to brainstorm with and to have that conversation with. And that's where I do accountability mentoring, where once a month for two hours, we just get together and have a have a great chat and set goals and support and do, you know, and, yeah. and I'm like you. I have two dogs for company. I have a I have a Dalmatian and a lurcher on, on a sofa and a chair in my office. And that's really <laughs> who I see apart from people through a screen. Mm. And, you know, it is wonderful. to That's, you know, I think we still all crave human interaction Definitely. do you know what i mean i think it's important to to still have that 
that connection. And there's no commu- real, I think we're losing community, the old fashioned village community. And I think that's where that is the heart. And that's, I, you know, yes, community. I, I, I agree with you. And I, I'm lucky enough to actually live in a village where there is still that community. Yeah. And I do have um, a, an accountability partner, or a couple of them uh-huh. actually, yeah. and, and who we do brainstorm with. In fact, uh-huh. I had um, I had a, a, um, a get together with um, a friend recently, and we sat and talked about all the jobs that we really don't like doing. Yes, yes, <laughs> all the things that we keep putting off and putting off. And she said, "Well, I'll hold you accountable to doing them if you hold me accountable." I got a message yeah. from her the other day saying, "I'm getting on with my jobs. How are you getting on with How yours?" <laughs> Oh God, we've all got those jobs. I know. Oh. I know. So, um, but that helps, right? Yeah. That does help. Yeah. And it's it's about reaching out, isn't it? It's that healthy reaching out and saying, I need, I need yeah. this this um connection mm-hmm. to help see me through, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And that and that's the thing, but the trouble is us strong women have this awful habit of not asking for help until we're on our knees and can take no more because we believe we're so invincible and we don't need help. But then it comes to the point where we're just so tired and exhausted and drained that it's like, all right, I give in. I give in. Just help me. Give me everything you've got. Help me. And I know. I think it gets to that point. And it, it is true. I mean, we're laughing, but it's... It's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not really laughing because I'm not... I'm, I probably am laughing from hysteria. Exactly. It's probably so true. Exactly, because it is so true, right? Yes. And but it's the same with everything, and it, it does impact our health. And it, it's, it, you know, you you talked about burnout before. Mm. It really does set us on a path to burning out. So, mm. yes, we can deal with all these challenges that life might throw throw at us. Hopefully, not as many as were thrown at you. No, through but I hope no one life. has as many. <laughs> Nobody wants that many. But, um, but you know, uh, most of us have challenges at some point in our lives. Most of us will find ourselves really struggling. Um, the, the, the difference is whether you do have that support. And if you don't have it within the family or, you know, within close friends, then how fabulous to be able to contact somebody like you and say, I need this support, help me through it. And we'll hear more about that in a moment. But right now, it's time for us to take a short break. And we'll be back right after this from our station sponsors. UK Health Radio. The station that makes you feel good. UK Health Radio. The station that makes you feel good. And you're listening to Alchemy 101 here on UK Health Radio with me, JJ, the practical alchemist, and my guest, life and business coach, Sarah Pittendrick. Now, you might be listening to this and thinking, yeah, but I don't have a business, so none of this applies to me. But I put it to Sarah that her method can be applied to all aspects of our lives. Yeah, totally, because it's a holistic approach. So yeah. so, so there's life and business coaching. Where it needs to blend, it does. Sometimes it's just life, sometimes it's just business. It just depends. Mm-hmm. The methodology, it doesn't matter what you want to do, whether you want to run a marathon, whether you want to, say, I don't go on a health kick, whether you want to, it wouldn't matter what you, say you had aspirations to buy a house, to move or whatever. This methodology is all about understanding who you are why where you are and where you want to be yeah Yeah. and then it's about well okay so what do I need to get there what are my strengths what are the weaknesses what are the opportunities what are the threats Mm -hmm. you know what do I need so it's like then creating the plan of what I've got and what I need to get me on my way and then it's the action plan and this is where I say pretend you've got a jigsaw puzzle and on the top of the jigsaw is the picture now that's your ultimate goal and that might be to run your marathon or to whatever you know build your business it doesn't matter what it is but that's your picture so cut your picture out stick it on your wall look at it remember you've got it there that's the dream and that's it then what you do is you tip your box out and you've got all your jigsaw pieces and you pull out one and you put it down that's the first piece and you're that piece you are the foundation you are that person it starts with you and then you start building all the little goals 
around it. And every goal gets broken down into smaller pieces so that it doesn't become overwhelming. And then yeah. ultimately, next time you look down, goodness me, you're halfway to your picture. You, pick, you can start seeing it. And then you're three quarters of the way there. And then you're there. And then there's just that last piece to put in. And that is so that's like the action part. And then the important part is nurture. And that's where you have to really make sure that you nurture yourself and the goal because it's about creating that positive energy. Energy creates motivation. Motivation creates inspiration and inspiration leads on to innovation. And that keeps you going and flowing and do. If you don't look after yourself, if you don't eat well, sleep well, surround yourself with you know radiators, not drains. You know, you need to be with like minded people. You need to have routines, plans, strategies in place, you know, follow the process, commit to it. If you don't do those things, then what happens is you go back to that sort of fixed mindset of, oh, I can't do this. I can't do yeah. this. So it's about creating a habit, forming a habit. You've got your picture to keep you motivated and you've got all your little goals to bring it to you so you're not overwhelmed. And, you know, that's the important thing is to keep your energy levels high. So whatever's draining you, whether it be people, processes, systems, things, whatever, you've got to be really ruthless and have a good spring clean. I think that's so true, isn't it? And a lot of people just hang on to things or they just keep going with stuff and it's really not serving them at all. Mm. And so therefore you do get drained of your energy. Overwhelm, I feel, is one of the biggest issues with with um, trying to get things back on track. It's that overwhelm where you just think this is too much for me. I can't. Yeah, yeah and that's exactly it. That when as soon as overwhelm comes in and it seems out of reach, it's like right, that's it. I can't. I'm, I can't do this. I'm out. Yeah. You know. So so it's important to piece it like the jigsaw puzzle, so that it's just you know bit at a time piece at yeah. a time and eventually the picture starts to unfold in front of your eyes yes and then also have that support so the worst thing yes. for me i think is when you're trying to do something and everybody around you is saying what what are you doing oh, why do. how yeah exactly well, if you think you're going to be able to do that you know yeah but the important thing there is what's very important is you have to look at the source of negativity so you have to look at who's saying this to you and what is their backstory. So if you're going to do something, yeah, and you want to do whatever it is, yeah, is the person who's giving you advice coming from, you know, um, like I always say, if someone's giving you constructive criticism, have they ever constructed anything? <laughs> and if the answer is no, if they haven't constructed anything, then you just have to take a step back and say, look, do you know what? Thanks for your opinion. You're entitled to it. This is mine and I'll move on. And and that is the important thing. It is constructive criticism coming from someone who's constructed something. And I would imagine that 99.9% .9 of the time it isn't because anybody who's played in an arena that you're about to play in, and that might be setting up a business or taking on a certain career or whatever, will only have empathy and understanding. And they will know how hard it is, but they will know that everything is possible. It is possible. And therefore, they would never say to you, it's not possible. 99.9% .9 of the time of people who are telling you it's not possible are people who probably have a dream, but they would never put the effort in to get it, to do it. Yeah. And they're the ones who are staying small. Yeah. And, and because they want they're you staying, to too. Yeah, exactly. They want you to stay small so yeah. that they feel yeah. comfortable. And exactly. it's all about them staying small. You, it's all about people keeping other people small to detract from themselves. That's what it invariably is. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that it's, it's such an important part of, of being successful in anything that you're trying to do is to surround yourself with people who are on the same wavelength. Absolutely. And it's that energetic component as well here. So, you know, it's, it's, it's about keeping the, the energy high and yes. not allowing yourself well, getting rid of all the energy drains, you've already, you know, you've already said that. Yeah, yeah. The energy drains can come in so many ways, can't they? It's not oh, just, yeah. I mean, t you know, what are the things to look out for there? Well, it's, it's people, like you've just said, you know, who, who's feeding you what and what are you listening to? And I think you've got to take a step back and rather than allow emotion to control you, 
you've got to take the emotion away because it might often be the people who 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 you are closest to you yes. you know the people yes. who you love and respect who are saying these things then it becomes very painful because you then feel that they haven't got faith in you they don't think you're capable or they don't think you're good enough now what you've got to do is you've got to take a step back and say hang on a minute you know to yourself they they ha- they're entitled to their opinions you know what have they done what is their intention what is their reason you know, and it might be that they they may have wanted to do what you're about to do, but they didn't have the confidence or the fear. So because that stopped them, they might be fearful of you going on and making the mistake that they were afraid of making, which is why they didn't do it. That's yeah. not fair. That was their choice. So you've got to it's all about a lot of people get held back the fear of what people think. A lot of people would say, oh, I didn't do this because I was worried about what somebody would say or what somebody would think. They stay in relationships they shouldn't be in because of, oh, well, what will the gossip say? What would happen if, you know, and and that's a long time to be unhappy just because Mm -hmm. of what somebody else was going to say. And, you know, everybody's entitled to their own life and their own opinion and their own do. And I think that just let them do the do and you just focus on what you're doing and you know, and if it and if it all goes wrong, if it goes wrong and you fail, right? That word fail, which I absolutely hate. Yes, that word too. fail, <laughs> right? Which I don't even believe is a word, but if that's what's in your head and you think, what if I fail? What I say is, and just look at all the lessons you'll have learned. Because yes, exactly. failure is opportunity in disguise. Because you'll have started it. You knew nothing when you started. You've been on a process. It maybe hasn't worked out how you hoped. So now take a step back. Look at what didn't work, write it down. Look at what did work, write it down, take the what did work and go again. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking about this only the other night, actually, um, how every time you go into something and it doesn't work out, you never come out the same person. There's always something that you've learned. Always. And you can apply yeah. that the next time and the next yeah. time. And, and eventually, yeah. uh, it, it reminds me as well of, of you know, so many people who have been successful in business. How many failures, in quotes, oh, well, have they absolutely. had? Yeah, mega. And they learn from them and they go on and they be stronger. And I was on a, a panel this week for the Entrepreneurs Forum. And we we held, we um, I was a guest speaker with, with two other uh, entrepreneurs. And we were all talking about the good, the bad and the ugly of business. We'd all lost a business at some point. Something, you know, but we'd all gone on and done and learned from our lessons. Yeah, Yeah. we'd all gone through adversity in our personal and professional life. It is life. And the trouble is, you've got this social media roller coaster that's sucking everybody in and saying, hey, life's perfect. It's laminated. It's just so. And if you're not if you're not living up to this, you're not you're nobody. You know, Mm -hmm. if you haven't got all these followers that I bought, you're nobody. Yes. And the reality is that, you know, our young influence, our young kids are being influenced by this crap, yeah. which is why, likes of yourself and me, we've got podcasts and I've got my formidable over 40 and we're telling mm-hmm. these young ones, we're saying, listen, let's just get real here. You know, we're a bit old and we're a bit wiser. Mm-hmm. We're seasoned. You know, let us tell you as it is. And, yeah. uh, you know, it's not like that. And it's about encouraging people to to not, you know, get sort of dragged into this this perfection and not be afraid of, of failure or not be afraid of things not working out. Because one, perfection is only an opinion. What's yeah. perfect to you might not be to me. Correct. What you like, I might like, like. Doesn't mean you're wrong. Doesn't mean I'm wrong. It's an opinion. Perfection is purely an opinion. That's it. So there's no way everybody in life is going to agree. So perfection doesn't exist. It's an opinion. So that, I think, if you can get past that, And understand that that is purely an opinion and therefore, you know, just just follow your own path, stay in your own lane, be true to you. If things go wrong, be comfortable in the knowledge that some of the most high performing, most successful sports people, the most successful business people, you know, have have probably crashed and burned and taken out of, you know, licked their wounds for a little bit and then gone, right, okay, come on, back up again. And it's about mindset, you know, not being afraid to fail, get back up, get back on that horse and go again. Yeah, I see a lot of younger people who are incredibly um, worried about appearing to fail. And, you know, and but also uh, a, a, a belief almost that you can just 
think your way or you know instagram your way into mm. success oh god yeah and it yeah. doesn't work that way that's all an illusion yeah it really is i mean all of this uh i'm i'm going to show you how to be a seven figure entrepreneur yeah. in six months or six oh, yeah. weeks or 10 days mm-hmm. followed by my program i had a lady came on the phone to me the other day and she had been wedged into an american coaching program it cost her eight thousand pounds. She's oh, never seen a coach. Word. She has never even seen a coach. There's no one-to-one coaching or anything. And she's like, "I need, I need you to help me. I need you as my coach." But before she told me it was eight thousand pounds, I was like, "All right, yeah, okay." So what's it? She says, "Oh well, I bought this coaching program and blah de blah, and um, it's just not working." And I thought she was going to say it was a couple hundred quid or something, yeah, you know. Yeah. And she was telling me about it, and I said, oh, "All right, okay." I said, "So, um, you know, what are you paying? How how much was this program?" She said, "Eight thousand pound." And then he spat my tea out. I was like, "What?" I said, "You paid eight thousand pound for this program?" She said, "Yeah, because this is it. You see, all well, the hype. I can turn your life around. I can do this. Absolutely." I mean, it should really be regulated. It should be regulated because it's just absolute, utter nonsense, you know. And <laughs> and in fact, I go out there and, and specifically say to people, listen, I'm not a coach. I'm not a coach. I'm not qualified as a coach. I'm an entrepreneur who's lived it and breathed it. And what I'm doing is I'm sharing my methodology. I'll share with you my methodology of how I turned my life around. But I'm telling you now, I'm not a coach. I'm a mentor sharing knowledge. Because yeah. I don't want to be in that arena. I don't want to be branded as one of these these people. You know, I mean, there's some very good coaches out there. Don't get me wrong. Of course but, there are, but, yeah. it's, but there's some very muddy water out there by by some people who are ruining it for the good coaches as well. You know, and yeah. Um, well, I, th- I think it's when you have people who say, "I can, you know, I can make you this oh, yeah. if you do what I did." It doesn't always work. You can't put, um, you know, a square peg in a round hole. You really kind of can't. You, you know, you can't. everything is individual, isn't it? So mm-hmm. you, people have to understand their strengths, get to grips with where they want to go, and yeah. then work out what works for them, mm-hmm. surely. Absolutely, yeah. But also That's understanding it. that it's it's work and it's a process. Uh, or, or maybe it's not that much work if you really love what you're doing, but it's a process. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. It is a process. That's exactly right. And... um and it takes time, and it, and I say it depends what the nature of your business is. Yes, you know, many, many. I, th- I think now on the back of the pandemic and how you know with the way inflation is and the way interest rates are going, and business is tough, and therefore people are very candid where they're putting the money. Absolutely. So there's a lot of no like and trust needed out there, and it takes a long time for people to get to know you. And social media now, you have to be consistent, and every day you need to show up, and you need to show up as you, and you need to be authentic. And it'll take time and there'll be months and maybe years where you think nobody's listening and nobody's watching. And then all of a sudden you get a message through and it says, I've been watching you for years. Oh, I know. I know. And, and, I, and, you know, <laughs> and you think, God, well, why didn't you just say a bit earlier? <laughs> but, but you know what I mean? And and this is true. And it's because people now get it all, you know, like unlike the other lady who was just she was taken in because. She she wanted to do, you know she wanted to do well she wanted yes, to do of course. well and she you know and it, and it was not no no reflection on her she she believed what she was told um, you know but if something's too good sounds too good to be true invariably it is isn't it yes that is true great advice from Sarah there and more to come but first it's time for another short break we'll be back with more from Sarah Pittendrig right after these messages from our sponsors. UK Health Radio, the station that makes you feel good. UK Health Radio, the station that makes you feel good. And you're listening to Alchemy 101 on UK Health Radio, the world's number one talk health radio. With me, JJ, the practical alchemist, and my guest, life and business coach Sarah Pittendrick, who, like me, seems to be constantly bombarded with emails and messages selling ways to get rich quick. I get these DMs on LinkedIn and I think, did you even read my profile? Oh, yes. Have you even seen what I've done? They're teaching me how to build a six-figure business. I'm like, hang on a minute. Could you just go and read my, uh, oh, go on my website, don't. please? And I'm looking. Then I'm looking at what they've done, and I'm thinking, 
there's something not quite ringing true here. <laughs> exactly. Know, so, somebody on. said to me the other day, somebody said to me the other day, uh, I mentioned something about financial advisors and she said, hmm. She said, financial advisors, how much have they, how much money have they made in their lives to be able to advise anybody about finance? If you are presenting yourself to me as somebody who's made, I don't know, however many millions doing this, that and the other, then I might be able to take your advice. But somebody who just sits in an office and says, well, you should do this and you should do that. Exactly. I I just want, you know, like, show me, Mm. you know, they say, show me what you did. Yes. Show me your results and then I might buy into it. Or, and then you might or might not. And I might not. And I still might not. Mm-hmm. And I still might not. Exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. absolutely. So, yeah. So it's uh, it's important to not fall into these traps as well. And this is, again, these are other drains that we were yeah. talking about. So I, I consider those to be drains. And I've oh. been... I've looked into these things before. I remember many years ago, I was tempted by a similar coaching program and it was a lot of money, a similar kind of figure, mm. similar kind of number. Mm. And uh, I remember, mm. I remember in, and we mm. had, had a chat with them and everything. In the end, I, was, I, I sat there and thought, really? Do, uh, you know, this, yeah. is just te- this is just me spending money to be taught how to be them. Yeah, yeah. That's not where I yeah. am. Maybe that's just me. I'm you know, just naturally yeah. not that way inclined. I don't really yeah. follow as mm-hmm. such. Mm-hmm. But I do consider that I had a probably a lucky escape there. I think it was a lot yeah. of money for not very much. Yeah, exactly. It's um, it's like everything. You've got to, especially when money's so hard to come by, you need to be making sure that you're mm. going to get a return on investment. Yeah, exactly. And discernment is really, really Absolutely. important. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And and again, not to knock all these people out there. Oh, are... goodness me. No, there's some great, that's what I'm saying. There's some great people out there. Yeah. And I really feel for them because mm-hmm. what's happening is that there's other people coming in and totally mudging the water mm-hmm. and giving them a bad name. You yes, know, it's, exactly. uh, it, it, but then that happens in across happens the board everywhere. in all businesses, doesn't yeah, it? It, it does. does. It yeah. does happen everywhere. And so then you have brought yourself back to a place where you're, um, you're doing okay, right? Yeah, I'm doing all right. I think yeah. I am, such wood. <laughs> you're well, you're healthy, you're managing, you're managing your life well. And, and so this is what, this is the, this is the inspiration and, and, and the information that you're now here to share with other people. And t- tell us, um, a little bit more about you because you've got a book as well haven't you yes i have i've just uh, i launched in january uh, my book called the i can method and what that is it's my memoir so Mm -hmm. you get to hear the story going right back to me being a a little girl riding ponies at seven and and then to to where i am today and how the i can method came about and all through the businesses the cancer being a mum and divorce and all of the other things and then at the back of the book it's the methodology so it's a case of I don't want it to be seen as a self-help lecture preachy book. I want it to be that someone reads my memoir and maybe in, in, a, in a chapter, it might be divorce, it might be bankruptcy, it might be cancer, it might mm. be building a business, it might mm. be scaling a business, whatever. It might resonate with them and they might go, God, do you know what? I thought I was on my own on this one. I'm not yeah. on my own. It's OK. Right. OK. So this is how I feel. Right. How did she deal with it? Oh, chapter section two of the book. Here we are. This is how she did it. And then in the back, it's the I can methodology so they can work on the breakthrough journal themselves. I've also broken that into um, a standalone journal so it can be bought without the memoir, a breakthrough journal, which is just the methodology. So that's like, right. you know, if you don't want to read all about my my turbulent life, you can just have the breakthrough journal. And it's come out uh, today on audio. So it's out on Audible. How fantastic. So you can listen to it. I, mean, I do find yeah. audio books really quite useful sometimes because you can listen to them in the car. And you that's know, right. it's a bit like too dangerous it. to read something. Exactly. Um, yes. <laughs> but uh, no, so that's great. So people can. Uh, get the book and then work through it themselves, which I think is really quite useful. But sometimes you do really want that one-on-one personal touch, which you're, you're willing to give again. And another part of your life that we haven't really touched on, but actually I think it's, it's quite an interesting part of your life and quite curious is horses. Yes. 
horses are quite special and yeah. I'm sure that they played a big part in your life as well. Huge part. Of, I've, I've never known a life without a horse. I, I probably sat on a horse before I'd even walked. Yeah. So horses have been through my family for generations. And now my son's taken over the reins, pardon the pun, and he's a, he's far <laughs> nice better pun. than any, like that. He, he's far better than any of us have ever been. He's won huge competitions, and uh, and he's a qualified coach and and so forth. And we've just had horses in our life all, all the time. I was only ever an amateur rider, um, but I rode against professionals. You know, when I was competing, my husband he rode and he he, he uh, had his category B job jockey's license which meant he could ride against professionals but he was an amateur still Mm -hmm. and he uh, showed and competed as well and uh, so horses have just always been a part of my life and they're just a wonderful wonderful way to spend your spare time with them you can learn so much from them just watching observing and listening and doing and you know they're uh, they're very therapeutic very, they very are. Good. I mean, there yeah. is such a thing as equine therapy, of course. Yeah, of you know? course. Yeah, and... I think I've had lots of it without it being formalised. <laughs> without you knowing it, you've had without lots of it. Without knowing it. it. <laughs> yeah, but that's why I wanted to mention it, because I think it's yeah. important to know that that's also been something in your life that's helped yeah. you along. So mm. well, the point I'm trying to make is that there are all these different elements in one's life. And of course, having the horses in your life, mm-hmm. it gave you the excuse, if you want to use that word, mm-hmm. to get away from the work yes, area of your it. life and into yeah. something completely different. And yeah. then, you know, being with horses is quite special. Mm-hmm. It is. It's very special. Horses and dogs for me. So yeah. um, it's always been about walking, walking mm-hmm. the dogs. I get here every day. Uh, where I can, unless I'm away on business or something, I, I walk between two and four miles every day with the dogs. And that is in the forest where it's just beautiful, quiet, tranquility, peace. And that is, I think, so important for everybody to have some me time. And okay. that's where you can literally just let it all just, you know, whatever the whirring wheel is, whatever's on it, just take a step back and slow it right down. Get come back. Na- Mother Nature is so she's such a healer you know she is such a healer and so generous and so giving yeah you know and I think if you can get out there in nature whether it's with horses dogs walking just watching the wildlife watching birds you know just allow yourself to just be you know just be and I always say the most important thing is to remember that you're not just a someone's you are a someone Yes. Yes. Uh, very true. And getting into nature, hugely important. It's something yeah. that I talk about all the time. Yes. But it is healing. <laughs> and if you're going through any stress, if you've got a business or even if you've got, you know, family stuff going mm. on, you know, even if you've got, if you, even if you're raising children, yeah. I know how full on that can be. Mm-hmm. And just to get some me time is really, really important. Yeah. I know yeah. that some parents struggle with me time when they've got small yeah. kids, but it yes. is important, isn't it? Yeah, it, it, it is. It's so important because it is it's to, it's important to reconnect with who you are. Yeah. You know, because that's so important that it, and it's so easy to lose yourself. Mm. And before you know it, you've not just lost yourself, you've lost your goals, your ambition, your vision. And and then, you know, and then that's when, you you know, you can start to feel demotivated. You can start to lose that passion and purpose and energy. And, you know, sometimes you can feel depressed. And I think it's very important to reconnect with who you are yeah. and and remember that you are a value. You know, you are a value and you are a someone and your opinion matters. Mm. You matter. You know, and and sometimes that's when that gets forgotten or misplaced. And I think it's so important to take the time every day, even if you just look in the mirror before you go to bed or you look in the mirror when you get up and you just say, yeah, I'm a someone. I'm not just a someone's. I'm here. I'm here. I might not be able to do what I want just now, but I've got plans and I'm going to keep that stake in the ground and I'm going to make it happen. You know, I will make it happen and commit to it. You know, so if you can only do a tiny bit of whatever it is you want to be each day, just ask yourself every morning, is what I'm doing today going to lead me to where I want to be? And if the answer is no, then you need to, you know, 
sort yourself out and, and get that, yes. get that, get, if it's a tiny little, a tiny little step, yeah. as long as every night you can go to bed and say, yep, I did that tiny little step. I'm a little bit further forward to where I want to be. Yes. And I remember a guest on this show once saying, try looking in the mirror and saying, I love you. Yeah. Which, it's quite hard for a lot of people. Uh-huh. Yeah, it is. Quite it hard. can be a hard thing to do. But if you mm-hmm. can do that, wow, yeah. is that powerful? Yeah, that's the position you want to be at because self-love is so powerful. Yeah. I don't think, I think that, you know, if you genuinely come from a place of, of self-love, self-belief, um, you know, and, you, you know, you can own that purpose and passion for yourself, then I I think that, you know, you're pretty unstoppable, really. I think that you are, yes. And uh, and, and you're connecting with nature. Uh, a lot of people who listen to this show regularly will know that I go swimming yes. and in the sea. Oh, and okay. that is just a beautiful connection to mm. nature. And literally, you wash away some uh-huh. of the stresses, literally wash yeah. them away yes. for a swim. is just beautiful. Now, I know that it's not everybody's cup of tea, uh, swimming in the sea in the UK, even through the winter, but it works for me. Yes, I, that's it. I don't say everybody should do it. It works yeah. for me. Yeah. Even yeah. though if you live in the in the city, yeah, sitting in a park for five minutes and listening that's to right. birds. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, just any yeah, anywhere where you can just find a little bit of space, a little bit of greenery. You know, as you say, most towns, most cities have a park. You know, there's somewhere that you could just sit by a little river or a stream and just have, you know, just 10 minutes even just to just to be and remember that you're a someone, you know, yeah. reconnect to yourself. And remember that you can. Yeah, absolutely. You can. You can. And, and not to be overwhelmed by it, by, you know, and that's what's so important. It just, you know. I think the key thing is, is what I'm doing today leading me to where I want to be? And even if it is, as I say, the most minute step, at least that's a step rather than going back to to bed and waking up the next day and saying, well, I didn't do anything yesterday and I'm not going to do anything today. Just the difference of being able to say, I did that small thing. And tomorrow that next small thing is going to become a little bit of a bigger thing. And then before I know it, all those tiny little tiny steps might become one decent sized step. It doesn't matter, but you're moving forward. That is so important and great advice. Sarah, we are sadly coming to the end of our time and uh, I can't tell you how much I've enjoyed um, having you on the show. I love your energy and I love what you're doing as well. And it's just, I just, uh, I'm absolutely thrilled when people uh, are willing to share their story like you have as well, because so many people are going through such rough times Mm, and it's so good to be reminded that we can we can come through it yeah Yeah. we we really can just don't look at the big picture have the big picture pinned take a look at it know where you want to be pin it and just take those tiny weeny steps and you can do it you really can and thank you so much for having me JJ it's been an absolute pleasure I've loved talking to you Oh, well, the pleasure's been all mine, I I can tell you. So, Sarah, thank you so, so much for coming on the show. Thank you so much. And remember, you can get through whatever you're facing right now. You can thrive. Just ask for help, be it medical or otherwise, and find the way through that's best for you. And that really is the end of today's show. Thank you for joining us. Remember, you can listen to all of our shows on all the main podcast platforms these days. If you like what you hear or if they've helped you, do help us spread the word by sharing them. You never know, it might be just what someone you know needs to hear. Also, check out the show I co-host with psychiatrist and coach Dr. Mark Goulston here on UK Health Radio. It's called Hurt Less, Live More, and it's the place for raw, open, uplifting and hopefully enlightening conversations with fantastic guests. For even more health information, there's our sister publication, Health Triangle Magazine. That's a monthly magazine that's full of great features complementing our radio shows. And you can subscribe online at ukhealthradio.com. Or to find out more about me, head over to thepracticalalchemist.uk. And that really is it. Join me for more alchemy next time. Until then, it's goodbye from me and that nightingale. Thank you.